All right, so when you're using Google Sheets, sometimes you want to look up a value. And previously, you would do that with the VLOOKUP function. We're going to go over the VLOOKUP function and then compare it to the newer XLOOKUP. And we'll talk about the differences. So let's first start out with VLOOKUP. And we're going to be looking up Sally's major. So we'll start with Sally. So that will be our search key. I'll click on that. And then the range for VLOOKUP to use is the source table. So that would be in B6 through D9. You have to do the entire table when you're doing VLOOKUP. And then you need to tell it how far to step through it. So we want to go uh, one column is the first column where the names are. Then you need to go two and three. So imagine if you had a very long column, you're sitting there pointing at the screen, counting it, hoping you get it right. It's not that bad in this small table. It's so easier to show you, but uh, that's a problem with VLOOKUP. And then already it's returning the value of accounting. So that's working, but a lot of times VLOOKUP doesn't work unless you type in the value false. And that just tells it that the data isn't sorted. And then there's your VLOOKUP function with four arguments just to return one value. All right, but it does work. So Sally is in the accounting department. Let's do that with XLOOKUP. It's going to look similar at first where it wants a search key and that's in G5. But then it wants the lookup range. So it wants just one range here where the values that Sally's going to be in are sitting, so that's B6 through B9, just that one column. And now it wants the other column to look in and return the result. So that would be the result range it's calling it, so that's D6 through D9. Now they should be the same height, but they don't have to be touching each other. We'll get into more of that later. That's the end of, well, let me hit the comma just to show you. So there are more uh, optional arguments that you could use with XLOOKUP, but you don't have to do any more. So we can be done with three arguments. Um, and we'll do the formula text function, which I just learned when I was looking at another YouTube video uh, to research this one to show you the two functions. And I'll link to that video in the description just to give uh, her a little bit of credit. But you can see that the VLOOKUP function is a little longer and it has four arguments. It isn't terrible at this point in time, but XLOOKUP is more simple. You don't have to count columns and you don't have to specify false. But now with these additional examples, we'll get into some things that XLOOKUP really does better than VLOOKUP. The next one is this, we're going to return two values. So if you were to do that with VLOOKUP, a lot of this will be the same. We'll use Sally as a search key. We'll specify the range, but we want to return the GPA and the major, but you just have to do two formulas. For the GPA, then we'll do a two, and then we'll copy this formula before we get out of here. We'll hit the enter key, and that's returning GPA. And now we're going to change the column to three to return the major. Not too hard. But with XLOOKUP, it will do it with just one formula. So this is really nice. XLOOKUP, Sally. The lookup range is the same concept that we had talked about before. But now the result range is two columns wide. Okay, so we'll just specify both of these. They don't have to be touching each other. So another result range could be uh, one more to the right. It could be to the left, but I kept these together. Keep it simple. We'll close this off and XLOOKUP writes an array, which is more than one value from one function. So we just did half the amount of formulas, right? But return the same amount of data. Let's go down to our next example, which is returning values from the left. So this has always been a problem with VLOOKUP because you can't specify a negative number for the column lookup. There is a workaround. And that is to, we're going to grab the search key. You make the range into an array. So we'll act like this is the first column in the array. And then we'll do a comma and we'll say, this is the second column in the array. 
you notice these curly brackets I'm using tell Google Sheets it's an array. And see, I think I already got it wrong because it doesn't know I'm with the doesn't know I'm done with the range yet. So I'm going to hit the escape key on that and I'm going to copy it from the one that I finished. So this is a case in point that these workarounds aren't the best because they're hard to remember. We'll come over and we'll paste it and we'll talk about it. All right, so I was able to go to the left and return the student ID. Formatting got a little goofed up. Let me fix that. And we'll look at what I did. So we built that array. I don't know. It looks the same as what I was doing, but who knows. And you put the column that was to the left and you made it over to the right with the array. So this, if you see what's highlighted, we said the range is B26 through D, and then you took A and you appended it to the right of B through D. It works. It's not pretty. But with XLOOKUP, all you have to do is specify the search key again. The lookup range. But now the result range, you just select the result range. It doesn't matter if it's to the left because it doesn't have to be attached to the lookup range. Hit enter. There you go. Super easy. So that's an obvious advantage of XLOOKUP. The next one is if the value is not found. So if you were to do a VLOOKUP and you would look up this name, Kate, it's not in the list. VLOOKUP will give you an error. So you have to construct an if statement to say if it's an error, then return this message. Otherwise, do VLOOKUP. So I'll just copy and paste that again because it's kind of long. I did do these myself, but I'm doing a video. Sometimes you don't want to watch me type the whole thing and want it think. And this is how you do a VLOOKUP to handle errors and give a custom more helpful error message. So this is going to say the student's not found. All right, to do that with XLOOKUP, all you would do is type out XLOOKUP. And the next argument, it's an optional argument. You could tell that by seeing the square brackets around it, but it's called missing value. And this is what it will tell the user if there is a value missing. So it's built in. You know where to put it, it's in the help text. Put it right there, close the function off, and it does the same thing. So let's look at the text in these two formulas. There's the, it goes off the screen. There's the text for the VLOOKUP, and there's the text for the XLOOKUP. So XLOOKUP is far more uh, tidy in that example. And the last one that we wanna do is changing the search order. So we're going to look up the latest grade. And if I do it for Sally again, specify the range. And I say it's a second column. You have to type that darn false again. And it's going to say that Sally got a 92. Well, let's say we want to look up the latest grade, right? Not the earliest grade. Well, there is a way to do it with VLOOKUP, but it's a big workaround. It's hard to understand. It's not very helpful. But what you can do with XLOOKUP is you can say XLOOKUP, find the search key, give it the lookup range, same lookup range, and the result range of the scores. Now the next argument is missing value. We're not going to bother doing that right now. So just hit a comma again, it goes in the match mode. We don't need that. And the search mode is what we want to do. And we're going to specify a negative one and all that tells it is start from the bottom and work your way up. So we'll hit enter and there it is. That's Sally's latest grade working from the bottom up. So there's another new feature in Google Sheets called the named function. And that allows you to create your own function and reuse it in other spreadsheets. So if there's something complicated that you have to do every month, every month you have to go back, copy it, figure out what you did and modify it. You can just create your own function and name it and then use that going forward so much easier. I'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching.